Hey, bon année. Bon année, mon ami. Did you get my uh, package? Yes, I got a package. <laughs> and I got your name on the package, along with uh, Danny. Yeah. I'm here, too. <laughs> yeah. We're there, too. Happy New Year, you, too. <laughs> Happy New Year. <laughs> Does that work? That neck, uh, the neck. Um... Ab- absolutely. Oh, good. It keeps uh, everything from the chin down warm, and when it's snowing, I can pull it up a little bit and cover my mouth. Although that causes a little bit of uh, fogging up of my glasses. But, yeah. That's uh, not a problem. I can't see anyways. <laughs> and the socks, the uh, socks I guess... I'm wearing them right now. They're, they're perfect. They, they. Um, uh, I don't know what they're made of, but it's a little bit like walking on something that's not solid. You kind of mm. move around in them. Mm-hmm. Uh, Different than anything I've had before, but they keep my feet warm. Yeah, I I made sure I try to find like some type of uh, high quality material. Yeah. So, so um, I guess it's snowing up there, right? It's, it's, uh, or it's well, it tries on and off. Uh, there is only about. Uh, 10% of the snow that had fallen that's still there, the rest of it has turned green because the temperature during the day has risen to zero or just above zero centigrade, 32 Uh. Fahrenheit. Uh. And... uh, so there's not much snow. Uh, it was um, uh, fairly cold, and it's going to be fairly cold. I think tonight we're looking at uh, centigrade 18 below. Wow. So uh, anything past 15 below to me is uh, torture. <laughs> yeah. But so, it's not torture like they get it continually up north you know uh, yeah they get uh 30 to 40 on a regular basis below zero so. yeah That's... we got to be thankful for <laughs> little blessings yeah like down here it's like like we'll have some days are colder, some days are warmer, but I know, like, usually, probably, like, in January, like, overnight, it would just be very, very cold. It's like, yeah. it's like late. It's like delayed, I don't think. Yeah. The snow. There's no snow and in, yet. In California, mm-hmm. they go down to 45 or 47, and they feel it as much as cold here would be if it was below zero. Yeah. Their their bodies are not used to any anything beyond fifty. Hmm. Uh, I mean like these these those communities like the Inuits, right? How they survive, I guess they wear like those huge uh uh Materials or shoes like uh, fur coats, but that's not that's, even that's not enough, right? You gotta have. No, uh, uh, it's <laughs> what what you have to have is some material that is manufactured, like these socks you sent me there. Uh-huh. Um, that that. Start off with the idea, this is going to be to stop you from freezing. <laughs> yeah. 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 
and and then they make the stuff and and it works if if you buy them you know a yeah. lot of people don't want to buy them because they can get socks for 95 cents exactly yeah you know <laughs> that's okay 95 cents if you're living in mexico yeah yeah uh, so what's new um me eh. meeting new people um I don't know, I talk to people around the world, it seems like, that are interested in uh, your work. It seems like recently I've been hearing from more people. Yeah. But I, I, I have not met anybody. I'm I'm still, if I had, don't meet these people, I, I don't really... Um, I don't know. I don't know who these people. Are. I don't know. Yeah. They're serious. Uh, Have you I heard of a guy by the name of? I think I've heard that name before. Because uh, I was talking to him yesterday, and he says he's having trouble accessing the site. He said he used to uh, uh, be able to get. Uh, all of the conversations we have together uh-huh. uh, but recently it seems like he can't get there so he's wondering if there's changes that have been made or well the whole site was re uh, was was uh, updated and we lost a lot of the old talks yeah. and it's so like a purge. Uh, oh, yeah it was a purge so that there was it's really all the recent talks we've had, and I started a process. I haven't finished it of re-uploading the old talks onto YouTube. Yeah. So that's where I've been putting them. Because so YouTube, it, it's like it's like a double-edged sword. Like you can reach people, but the site is just it's so controlled and it's brigged. Yeah, you know they'll they'll find any excuse to delete your channel. Or, you know, you know like. If I they, gave you his phone number. Would you mind giving him a call and answering his his questions? Okay. Because I I don't know the answers because I don't even have electricity, <laughs> let alone contact anybody uh, to find out how the cells. Uh, or or uh, you two uh, do your stuff. So if I if I just go here to a phone call that uh, we had yesterday, mm-hmm. um. That apparently is a Michigan number, which is where his family comes from, or uh, on on the Bruce Peninsula of Canada. But he's now living, from what I get, in a place called Moosonee, which is near James Bay in northern Ontario. But that's the phone number that he says um, he prefers to be on because it doesn't cost him anything. Yeah, I'll give him a call. Okay. So you have even uh, watching what's going on in uh, on the stage in the world? Yeah. Basically, whatever comes over the telephone um, is is what I get to see. And I'm reading uh, books when when it's impossible to go outside because of freezing rain or whatever. Oh, I thought you stopped reading books. I thought that was... Uh... I hadn't read uh, up to about two months ago. 
uh, for a long time. Uh, but I've started reading again. Right now I'm reading a book called The Secret Life of Plants. Uh, the reason for reading it um, is not to be taught anything, I guess, uh, on plants, because anything that's alive has basically the same uh, purposes. They perform a role in the bigger picture. But by writing a book, Secret Life of Plants, and the word plants includes ants, I figured that there would be a coding structure in there that uh, deals with who's living underground in the Moho discontinuity. And uh, I haven't come across uh, really novel stuff yet, but I'm still looking and I'm only about a third of the way through the book. But I've read a, a number of books on um, there is no such thing as dying. That life is energy and energy cannot die. It simply changes format. And, and that, like everything in the universe, um, you are, prior to birth, energy that adds DNA and becomes life the way we know it as uh, human beings or plants or animals or whatever. And when the task assigned to it is completed, you uh, go back to being energy, which um, uh, is, is um, basically you without anybody being able to see you. And you just continue in the process of learning along the way. There there are a number of books that suggest that as competition to the theory that people before the Ice Age went underground and, and formed a society of uh, artificial intelligence and artificial insemination and that those below ground are in fact controlling the world uh, while they're here as opposed to uh, creation who controls the universe from beginning to the end and and the fact that they have now confirmed that the uh, um, universe is expanding uh, and not declining, uh, that uh, right now you have this spacecraft today that's going by uh, Ultima Thule, um, will will confirm um, or or put down any notions that science has had about the beginning of the universe because ultimate Thule is one of the rocks that that came directly from the Big Bang and was never affected by anything was one of the first uh, things in the Big Bang. Now, as I read it, I kept thinking, 
what they're talking about is not a bang in the sense of it just came out of nowhere and and exploded but it's uh, the word has a letter that shouldn't be in there it should be the big bag and and as you blow into a bag it gets bigger and bigger until at one stage of the game it pops And that's something that you should consider when we talk about the fifth dimension. It means leaving this before that happens. And that's what the cell is is offering as a possibility um, based on the big eight O having a life that would end about 40 years from now or sooner. Sooner could mean this afternoon. Everything that I'm doing in the front lawn is uh, based upon the possibility that we get lifted off from here and brought to a fifth dimension portal that would take us to paradise uh, in a dimension that we don't yet understand. And it all goes back to consciousness creates life. Once we are conscious of something, it then creates what we want to see. In the same way as plants have basically the same structure for life and death as as human beings, um, most people don't understand that plants have a, a sexual aspect to them where there is a cone or a seed that is either male or female and it's how to get one to the other because they don't have the possibility of moving but they do have the possibility of attracting flying things that carry the pollen from one to the other and therefore produce an offspring in the same way as human beings do by merging male and female without having to chase it. There's one one, uh, phrase in there where they're talking about Plants hang around all day wondering what those human beings are doing, chasing all over. When when they get the same result without ever leaving the place they're at. And that they grow um, going higher at an equal rate or... Uh, less than what they grow going downwards. They go looking for stuff through their root structure, especially water and minerals that will help them live. And that how well you treat plants they say, 
um, will determine how the plant grows. If, if you demonstrate feelings towards a plant, um, saying, you know, good morning or tapping it as you go by or what have you, um, it grows much better than if um, all you do is, is dump water on it occasionally. You think that's uh, plausible? Yeah, it's it's all possible um, if you disregard much of what the um, scientists of the past c concluded without having the evidence of uh, what the scientists are getting now. For example, um, if, uh, if you're treating a plant badly, uh, modern day science would be able to detect that. Whereas ancient science, a couple of hundred years and backwards, um, didn't have that ability because what a plant does is so minuscule, so minute, that we don't have it in our own makeup an ability to spot it. However, with instruments that take all of that for granted, they have been able to amplify using light, for example, um, of uh, um, feelings that plants have by treating them well or treating them badly. If if a person is standing in front of a plant, for example, and thinking they're going to hurt this plant, they're going to burn it or something to that effect, um, the plant reacts to the thought. And if you put sensors on the leaves that now are able to measure the movement of energy in the plant in one direction or another by um, converting the signal that you're getting into light and expanding the light and, and projecting it on a wall, for example, you can sit there and have basically a uh, limited conversation with the plant and see how it reacts by looking at the wall, having expanded the light that was made from the movement of energy within the plant in one direction or another. Tell it you love it and it does a certain thing and it repeats it uh, every time you do it and tell it you're going to burn it and it does the opposite and it repeats it every time it gets that feeling. And uh, the growth that occurs in plants, which is important in, in food, um, is, is advanced or enhanced by doing something that's good for the earth around it as opposed to using chemicals to force it 
to do something that will then hinder growth of other plants within the same plot of land because it's been damaged by the chemistry that you added to make one certain kind of uh, plant grow better. So it all comes down to the technology of consciousness. It's not what you do that's most important. It's what the plants believe you're going to do. And they know it before you make the decision because they are receiving our brain structures information before we get it. It takes longer in the space of time for a human being to make a decision and and it's been found using these detectors that once you say, for example, raise your hand, that is not the first step when you make that decision. Prior to that, there is a buildup of stuff that leads to that decision that the plant is in touch with. So before you decide you're going to burn the plant, the plant knows you're going to decide to burn it. And it reacts at that moment rather than at the time when it actually is formed in our own thought process. So it's uh, because they can prove it by these machines, technology that they have invented for the purpose over the last 50 years, and they can repeat it. And that's always the most important part because if it can only be done by one person, um, although we are all different and, and the plant knows that, but you must have a, a basic structure that says, when somebody loves me, I will grow better. When somebody hates me, I will grow worse or not grow, decrease in, in my ability to grow. And now they've reached that point. And that's why this book, The Secret Life of Plants, is interesting uh, in in the conceptual uh, feeling that one has. And one of the things they mentioned there that I had heard before but I didn't understand what was meant is that if you remember in the 60s and 70s, there were a lot of beatniks. And many of them were known as tree huggers. And and I thought, you know, tree hugger yeah. doesn't make much sense. But when you put it in this context, that's basically the opposite, is they were ahead of their time. And apparently pine trees are more affected 
or more visually responsive than anything else. And that's what the whole front here is made of, is big uh, uh, conifers, trees that, that make seeds on cones as opposed to uh, um, ones that have just ordinary leaves. Now, conifers were the original trees. A fir tree um, is made, the, the name of the fir tree is derived from the word first. Con, a fir, is derived from one. O-N-E, cone. This is a uh, touched upon. It's, I don't know if it's, uh, I don't, you know, it seems like a coincidence, but I don't believe in coincidence. I was just listening to that. There was a film where they <clears throat> touch on this in the, uh, in the movie, The Happening. And it's saying how kind of these, <clears throat> it mentions how plants are like reacting. Yeah. They're able to sense. Uh, good feelings or good uh, intentions yeah. from people. Grant, uh, according to this book, plants will grow what you wish it be. The more you want it, the better it will grow. The less you want it, the faster it will curl up and die. So it's reading your mind, but in this case, the evidence shows that it begins to read your mind before your mind makes a decision. It can read the preparatory things coming together that tell it, if all these things combine, this person will decide to do such and such a thing. And it's interesting that the scientists gave the name plant, which is basically the concept of an ant and the reasoning behind the people that went into hiding being uh, A, on the scale of development, ants, uh, bats, cats, lions. So ants. You don't see it because number two is number one. So you have uh, ants, rats, bats, cats. And you start on the clock with a second instead of a first. So it's giving you a hint that what you're missing is in hiding someplace. And the model for that is an ant, first animal, that the ant rummages the surface of the earth, taking with it to its queen whatever it requires for making more ants and getting quote unquote, love from the queen. And that's basically what human beings are doing now with governments is they have a monarch and they go collecting stuff and hand it over to the queen in the form of taxes. 
ants do it in in more um, useful things than money. They bring the actual product of um, material that is no longer being used or badly being used and and take it into hiding. And they go through a process of building places where the queen can lay eggs or begin the process of life in in their community, which basically confirms that the Moho discontinuity populated in a tunnel network around the the globe uh, from people uh, who were alive prior to the Ice Age and who want to control the universe but can't do it by themselves and needed answers to questions which could only be answered by laboratories with scientists. And therefore, they hid (laughs) their existence during the Ice Age by going underground. And if you look at the history of the planet that would have been going underground would have occurred uh, at about 24,000 BC. And two sections of eight years would be 16 years bringing it to the point where it's starting a um, building project on the surface to, to create the people that will populate all of the tests they need to be uh, done. And then they collect the information And people don't yet understand what, say, uh, uh, Nobel Prizes are all about. Scientists who have discovered something new that has been confirmed by a larger group of scientists are given an award. But nobody realizes that the reason they're given the award is that the information that they now provide, which has been verified, goes into a set of computers underground and builds a database, deep science, that that has all of the proofs that they will in the end require for travel in space. You know, the the arrival of a spacecraft at the farthest ends of the universe is, is like somebody going for and a half billion years back and saying, okay, this is what we have brewing here and this is how this will develop in the future. And the further back you go, the more you see the beginning of that laboratory which happened today, out about Thule, beyond the farthest knowledge is basically what 
that means beyond the the original wisdom when you don't know that there is a group of people hiding and gathering the information you ask yourself a question when did life begin and how did it begin and when did life begin for humans where you go back in time and most people today would say that the process of making humans began about 300,000 years ago others will bring it closer to about 130,000 years ago but then you have to say what happened when the first one was made and how would it be made well what it requires is a recipe of minerals that form the structure of a human being lacking electricity because there are a few billion switches in a human body uh, that have to go on and off at different times in to make things work and the most obvious are the heart uh, valves and stuff like that lungs squeezing in and out like a, an accordion but there are billions of little switches that most people have no idea exist that prevent or cause cancer depending on the electrical circuit that it gets now where does it get it well if if you put all the pieces together and you hit it with lightning and it gathers up that electricity it brings the fetus to life but of course as we've discussed before uh, a child being born by a pond is going to die because there's no one there to take care of them unless you understand the concept that in the ant rat bat cat structure of making animals the next one is the king the lion and that's the logo all of uh, Royal Bank of Canada have outside their buildings and and that's where the Queen of England has her money it's in the Royal Bank of Canada uh, to to run whatever it is they're running here right. when we say the Queen well the Queen is most important because a child being born as a male and being first is going to die no matter what because can't make children but a hermaphrodite female which combines both male and female genitalia and uh, sexual dispositions if it survives that first step of being born then it can make clones of itself and apparently sometime between 300,000 BC and 130,000 BC that occurred now after a period of time probably about 50,000 years to 80,000 BC 
clones were all that were here. But the work schedule and the decision-making process for running a worldwide community required a subdivision of the female into what one would call mother, who became the politician and made the mental decisions that a community required and left the physical work to the male part. So having subdivided into two genders as opposed to one made it possible for men to do the physical work and at the appropriate time, the female would take a subservient role in order to disguise what it already knew from the male who had discovered it without any knowledge of what to do with it or what it meant or what have you. And the male became the leader of the community while the female, going backwards, it appeared to the outsider, became the person who washed the dishes, cleaned the bathrooms, became the uh, uh, subservient, service-oriented person with a projection of an image that it was inferior. However, once you start understanding DNA and genetics, you understand that the best place to get the basic material on an individual that has its genetics for um, any type of responsibility or work place activity or what have you, personality, all of that can be had from bathrooms, from watching who goes for a shit and gathering some of that in pretending to be a cleaning process, sending it to a central lab that then starts defining the genome of that individual so that <laughs> some of those genes that are responsible for certain things can then be inserted in future beings if what you want is someone better than happened accidentally or just by, by uh, uh, the obvious coming together of a man and a woman to make, to make a, a baby in, in a process called genetic engineering. So if one person is excellent as an author, and you define what gene that person has, what set of genes it has, that may not mean anything. But if you take a thousand people who are defined as good authors and you do their genome, you can define which gene is more than likely responsible for making that 
person better at doing that particular thing. And if that's what you want, a better golfer, better hockey player, a better scientist, a better author, you can pick out from your genome bar out of each bottle what you need to add to a child to be born who would then have whatever it got from its parents plus what you added. Or contrary, if there's something in the genome that prevents the person from becoming a better author, you can, out of the parents, extract that. And when you bring the two people together, then what's left is what you're looking for. Now, I put it to you that this process of genetic engineering was known before the Ice Age. And it was the basic plan that they had when they went into hiding. But that they would not begin the process until they had been forgotten and they were creating humans on the surface in the numbers that they needed at that time. So there you go. A Japanese guy recently announced that he has made twins. And everybody says, oh, you can't do that without realizing that we're all that. Each one of us over a period of thousands of years, starting at about 4,000 BC to now 6,000 years, we've all been made and undone and remade and what have you uh, at least once in four generations. Great great grandma may have been the one who went through the process of being genetically engineered. That would allow grandma to be genetically engineered, ma to be genetically engineered, and me to be genetically engineered. Because it's a matter of transferring down the information from one to the other once it's been put in four generations before. Well, we have arrived today at what was the goal, an understanding of the beginning of the manufacturing of uh, planets four and a half million years, billion years ago. Their goal when they went into hiding was to find out how to manage a space program. The end of that would be to find the beginning of this space age where planets were made, and today they have taken pictures on a flyby of something that happened four and a half billion years ago. You can expect from now on that any changes that occur are not 
accidental or coincidence. They've been planned for at least 26,000 years. And when you look around, you know, at, at things like Donald Trump or Brexit in England and uh, all of the activity going on that's different from what used to be up until a few years ago, not an accident, all for a purpose. And there is no escape except creation and the information that there exists, whether scientists can find it or not, a trap door leading out of this universe and into a new five-dimensional instead of four-dimensional universe. Now, black holes were announced years ago as being a place where everything that goes close enough to it including planets and suns, get drawn in and never come out again. But now they're announcing super black holes. And the super black hole is pushing out wind. In other words, what it's doing is returning into the universe what it took in in another place. And that causes it to grow or as if you were blowing into a balloon or a paper bag you are expanding at a much faster pace than they ever anticipated. And you know what happens when you expand the balloon. It reaches a point where it goes pop. And by doing pop, what it's doing is starting the process over again. So what they call the Big Bang, I suspect, is more a big bag. Just take the N out. The N stands for new. Bags are what I can imagine is, is happening blowing up a bag and if we want out then we have to wait for the signal from the cell that there is a pickup about to happen and and the way, you know, I don't know how it's going to happen, uh, but I, I've been imagining looking at the front that because there is a pole with a uh, satellite antenna on top of the pole stuck into the ground in the middle, two feet down, and I buried it in concrete, um, 18 feet up from the ground, should there be a um, flying saucer type device, the 
more than likely place where it would come from would be out of the ground, up a, vo a volcano shaft from an, an extinct volcano. And for that reason, it would have to look like a saucer because it has to go straight up rather than just flying off a airfield. And that flying saucer would have on the bottom of it a part that folds open like an orange and would arrive at the front field about 100 feet in diameter. And they asked me to make a circle for uh, uh, growing plants there uh, on a 80-foot diameter with a interior circle of 40 feet. Now imagine a flying saucer arriving and dropping down holding off at about 50 feet off the ground, opening its doors on the bottom, and then coming down to 20 feet, knowing that that pole that's there is 18 feet out of the ground, and then a stairwell being lowered, and those that are to be picked up walk up and in, and then the doors shut and flying saucer disappears. Well, that's my earthly understanding. But you can imagine it may be a lot more um, smart than, than just a flying saucer. But that's what I think is going on here. And that's why the field was surrounded by trees, so that uh, there would be a um, continuous evolution of life on Earth, from plants to the people who leave it. leaving behind those people who didn't care about other people or the uh, lives they created for others by uh, being nasty. The only word I can think about that's kind so I would say to you get ready it can't be that far away it could happen anytime and more than likely more people would grasp the concept of what's happening as not being accidental but having been planned and where they fit into this scheme of things will they only help those people who are covered by media so that they look good to other people about how helpful they've been <laughs> only because their name appears in a paper or on television? Or will they help people because those people need help? And nobody's ever going to report on it, but they're doing it anyways. And that's what you guys have started doing a couple of years ago. So 
I suggest that you are among the people who have been chosen for what you do, not what you get in the way of publicity, but what you do. Sending me a pair of socks, you didn't have to do that. Sending me lights that turn on by sunlight, charge during the day and turn on at night through movement, you didn't have to do that. But you did. That suggests that your DNA is in tune with what is occurring. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Compassion. Thank you. Anyways, have a good year. Uh, 2020, people will see clearly, is what an optometrist would tell you. And I think that's more because what you know today will become more general knowledge, more people by 2020. And at least we have one more year to help other people grasp the concept. Forty years leads one to 2058. Give or take four years, 2054 to 2062. That is the final stage. That doesn't mean for us it can't happen today. It could very well happen today. It could very well happen tomorrow or next year or the year after because change is in the air. Crazy changes a lot of time. Nobody cares for other people unless they get publicity. Okay. All right. Okay, Glenn. Talk, talk to you again sometime soon. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, definitely. Bye for now. All right. Okay. All right. Take care. Yeah.